Yo, what is going on guys and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today we're going to be taking a look at what weapons are actually good for Ganyu and see exactly how good they are. And you know what that means. My fucking spreadsheets. So let's dive into the nitty gritty details here. Now I know there are a lot of numbers here, but basically we just took all of the bows with any relevancy and compared their damage per shot. Not exactly DPS, but just to give you a general idea of how much damage you can expect to deal with each of these bows on your Ganyu. Now for testing purposes, we assume that all of your shots are crit and or hitting a weak spot, so keep that in mind. Also, for all 4-star and 5-star weapons, they are being evaluated at refinement rank 1, and all the 3-stars will be evaluated at refinement rank 5. Also, in terms of artifacts, we will have no substats taking into account, but we will have the stats from a max level feather, an attack percentage timepiece, a cryo damage cup, and a crit damage circlet. The talent level for Ganyu's abilities will be 6, but we will only be taking a look at Ganyu's charge shots, not her ult or her E, because those are part of her kit of course, but without a doubt the most important and strongest part of her kit are her charge shots, so you should be building for them and trying not to leave the other abilities too far behind and not the other way around. Now let's first take a look at Amos Bow. Now as you can see here, we're taking into account one stack of its passive because it's impossible for an arrow to be in flight for less than 0.1 seconds, so you'll always get the benefit of at least one stack plus the charge attack damage bonus, which will make your actual shot deal 17,000 damage and the bloom deals about 29,000 damage, for a whopping total of 46,098 damage. Meanwhile, at max stacks, that jumps all the way up to 58,391 damage. Next on the list, we have the Prototype Crescent, which is the free-to-play, craftable bow. The passive increases your attack by 36% at Refinement 1 when you land a headshot. So without the passive, your shots will deal 12,500 damage and your blooms will deal 21,250 damage, which would make the total damage of your shot be 33,750 damage. And with the passive proct, that would jump up to 39,158 damage, which is really good for a free-to-play 4-star weapon. Next, we have the only 3-star on this sheet, which is the Sharpshooter's Oath. Now, at Refinement 5, this increases the damage of your shard shots by 48% when they are hitting a weak spot. Unfortunately, this does not increase the damage of your blooms, and not all enemies have weak spots so this isn't really going to be up all of the time. So the damage per shot is 10,863 without the passive and 16,077 on weak spots. And the blooms will always deal 18,467 damage putting the total damage at 29,331 and 34,545 respectively. Next, we have the Black Cliff Warbow, which is currently in Paimon's shop, and spoiler alert, it's really, really good, so you should definitely go ahead and pick it up if you have the chance. The passive increases your attack every time you kill an enemy, and it can stack up to three times, and it gives you crit damage as a substat, which is incredibly good for Ganyu. And also, killing people very quickly is very easy for Ganyu to do, so the passive has a surprisingly high uptime. You will probably have it most, if not all of the time when you're fighting mobs, since it lasts so long as well, and if not three, then at least one or two stacks for sure. Anyway, with no stacks, your shots will deal 12,309 damage, and your blooms will deal 20,926 damage, for a total of 33,236 damage. With one stack, that'll go up to 37,225, with two, it'll be 41,213, and with max stacks, it'll go all the way up to 45,201 damage, making it the highest damage 4-star weapon for Ganyu. Next, we have the Skyward Harp, the only other 5-star on this list. So per shot, it will deal 12,726 damage, and the bloom will deal 21,634, for a total of 34,630 damage. However, if you take the physical damage proc into account, the total damage jumps all the way up to 40,416. However, keep in mind that this can only happen every 4 seconds at Refinement 1, so it won't always deal that 40.4k damage. That being said though, the weapon does give you crit rate as a substat, and in these tests, we're assuming that you have a 100 percent crit, so it doesn't affect the results at all. But in practice, that crit rate will be super helpful in building up your Ganyu, because it increases the quality of life and ease of building her, and takes weight off of her artifacts a lot more. So keep that in mind as well. And now finally, we have the Viridison Hunt, which is very similar to the Harp. With this, your shots will deal 10,202 damage, and your blooms will deal 17,344, for a total of 27,547 damage total, making it the weakest 4-star so far by 
quite a large margin. However, if we take into account the AoE damage proc, the damage becomes pretty damn good, going all the way up to 39,975 total damage, making it the second best 4 star after Black Cliff only when it's at max stacks. However, that passive damage is done over the course of 4 seconds, so it's not even instant, and this does have a 14 second cooldown of Refinement 1, meaning it has a downtime of about 10 seconds per proc. However, this and the Skyward do have the benefit that the passives don't require kills or weak spots being hit in order to proc, which makes them better options for bosses, and it also makes them require less skill to actually use op optimally. The Hunt also has the added benefit of giving you crit rate as a subset as well, which again makes building Ganyu a whole lot easier, and the Cyclone effect can pull in enemies and help your AoE capabilities from your bloom damage. So it does have its pros and its cons, but overall a pretty solid option for Ganyu. Another two weapons that I didn't add to this list but I figured I should give an honorable mention is the Stringless and the Slingshot. These are objectively worse than any of the aforementioned weapons, but Stringless is really good for support Ganyu. And Slingshot can be pretty good, but it's incredibly inconsistent. There's really no realistic way you can position yourself perfectly in between every enemy for the passive to take into effect. And if you don't, you get punished for it and you deal 10% less damage for literally no reason. So it's just not worth it whatsoever. So to sum it all up, I've made a little list here of the weapons at their peak performance with all of their passives procced and everything is perfect, and at their lowest possible performance with none of their passes active or at least the very lowest amount that it can go. So you can see here that the Amos is just uncontested in both, but the Warcliff does beat out the Harp at max stacks, and something I should mention about the Prototype Crescent is that the passive is almost always up, so it's deceptively good. And because it's completely free to play, you can get this at higher refines than, say, obviously 5-star weapons, but even the shop weapons can be pretty difficult to refine because they require you to do so many summons to buy multiple copies of them. So you can actually beat out the Skyward Harp if you constantly have the Prototype Crescent proc active, because the Harp does have that 4 second cooldown for it to do optimal damage. And of course, if you can't th get the Warcliff, this is just a really, really good option. I think most people will be able to get refinement to at the very least, so it's just really nice in that regard as well. So with that in mind, I've gone ahead and made an overall tier list of the weapons you can use for Ganyu, and here it is on screen. I think the Amos bow is just the uncontested, unquestionable, just the best option for her. And then you have the Warcliff and Prototype because they have such good uptime. I've put them ahead of the Skyward Heart for that reason, and then you have the rest. Alright guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, and if you did, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy videos like these, as well as builds, guides, and other general discussion videos about Genshin Impact. Special shoutouts to my patrons for their continued support. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And shoutouts to Jack for the amazing spreadsheets, as always. He has truly spoiled me at this point. I don't think I can go back. But anyway, that's gonna be it for me, guys. Guys, thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you in my next video. Take care.